Station, followed by a waiting period for particles to settle, ensures most of the trichomes have detached and sunk to the bottom of the bucket. The 220 silk screen will keep unwanted leaf matter on top. During the settling period, you can gently mix it every few minutes. Keeping the water cold is important. If it is not still icy cold, then you did not use enough ice. After the settling period, gently lift the bag from the bucket and let the water drain, squeezing gently to get as much of the water out as you can. The leaf in this bag can be put through the process a second time for a reduced yield. Otherwise, it is now a waste product and can be discarded. The valuable trichome content is now in the water in the bucket. Place the 73 bag or silk screen over the second bucket. Make sure it is tight or else have a friend hold it in place. Now pour the green water over the second screen. You will probably need to do this a bit at a time because the water will pass through this screen very slowly. All of the water that passes through the screen becomes a waste product and can eventually be discarded. A sandy-like residue will accumulate on the screen. This is the prized product, an extremely potent hashish that just needs to be dried. Once all of the water has been poured through the filter, remove the bag from the bucket and squeeze the hash in the screen to remove more water. To dry it further, place it flat on a hard surface, sandwiched in a towel, and press it firmly with a roller of some sort. Repeat this several times. If it is to be consumed immediately, it need only be dried enough so that it will burn properly. If it is to be stored, then it may need to be stored in the freezer or else dried further by gently warming it in an oven. Keeping your grow show under wraps and protected from unfriendly people is, for the most part, simple common sense. The majority of grow up busts occur as the result of loose lips. So called friends become jealous or vengeful and soon become rats. The easiest way to avoid that is simply not to tell anyone about an indoor grow room. Just keep your mouth shut. But knowing how police operate and the technology they use is just as important when it comes to protecting you and your family's privacy and to prevent an unlikely bust. Following are discussions on some of the important issues faced by growers. Electricity is a key ingredient to any indoor garden. In order to grow lots of plants, you need to consume lots of electricity. Some growers use alternatives and are off the grid, so to speak, meaning that they do not get their electricity from local utility companies as most of us do. These people use windmills or generators or even solar power to run lights and appliances. 
However, the practical use of these alternative power sources usually involve a prohibitively large startup cost. Diesel generators are common, but are generally efficient only for large commercial grow operations. So, for most growers, the reality means dealing with high electricity bills, and so many wary growers are compelled to wonder, how much is too much? Most electricity companies operate like businesses. Regardless of how suspicious your electricity consumption is, as long as the bill is paid on time each month, they are happy to supply you with as much as you need. Only when the bills are not getting paid on time will they take any interest in you. Furthermore, billing systems are generally computer processed and because they will typically have tens of thousands of customers, actually taking notice of suspicious power consumption is quite unlikely. However, consumption patterns can be an indication of the type of appliances being used in a home. For example, a 2,000 watt load that begins at 8 p.m. and stops at 8 a.m. repeatedly each day may clearly indicate the likelihood of a high intensity discharge light in use, even though that in itself is not illegal. The important thing to consider here is that if the electricity company or police are analyzing your power consumption, it is likely that you are already under investigation. Checking your electricity consumption is their way of attempting to confirm what they already suspect. In some areas, electricity records are public domain, so police can access them easily. In other places, they may need a subpoena in order to see someone's electricity bill, though they can probably find ways around that. DEA and local law enforcement agencies have been known to provide formal instruction to utility personnel on how to spot indications of a possible grow operation. But this usually has little to do with the actual electricity consumption and more to do with teaching meter readers the common telltale signs of a grow op, such as blocked out windows, excessive condensation, and suspicious sounds and odors. However, for the most part, the main concern of most electricity companies is loss of revenue. So unless they think they are being cheated, they won't ask questions. Furthermore, there are so many legitimate explanations for what may seem to be suspicious electricity consumption, police forces would be setting themselves up for severe embarrassment if they were to rely solely on electricity consumption patterns to obtain warrants and search people's houses. What can I say? Uh... I'm sorry. Yet many semi-commercial growers in moderately sized homes in Canada and the U.S. use up to 10,000 watts of light every day for years, pay their huge electricity bills, and never have a problem. The degree to which electricity companies communicate with police is not always clear, and will certainly vary from area to area. Generally, what constitutes suspicious electricity consumption will depend on the size of the dwelling, the typical consumption of similar sized dwellings in the same neighborhood, how many people live at the dwelling, and what kind of large electrical appliances might be there. A small apartment may only use a couple of hundred kilowatt hours of electricity per month with an average bill between $30 and $60. Whereas a large, multi-bedroom house with a hot tub and a wood shop may use upwards of 2,000 kilowatt hours, costing over $200 each month. Many growers, before they begin growing, will intentionally run their power bills high by leaving lights on